It's good to have you back, Mrs. Winant. Pablito has really missed his morning exercise. Martin, you better have a look at the furnace in the greenhouse. It's not working properly. The greenhouse, madam? There's some cold nights coming. All right, Mrs. Winant, I'll see to it. Oh, and Mr. Howard will take care of Pablito as soon as he gets back. Howard? Why? Anna and I are off to visit my brother in Santa Maria. You are? Why, yes, Mrs. Winant. It's Sunday. Sunday? Oh. Yes. Sunday. Good morning, Martin. Something wrong? Your mother has completely forgotten about that oak tree falling on the greenhouse last year. <sighs> well, you didn't correct her, did you? Oh, no, Mr. Howard. I wouldn't do that. Thank you, Martin. Thank you. Where did you come from? Better get on home now. Come on, scat. No, that's for cats. What do you say to dogs? Well, however you got in here, you can get right out again. What is it? Got a bone buried there? Hungry fella. All right, come along. I'm sure there's a bit of roast left over from last night's dinner. <coughs> oh, well, if you're going to be difficult. Oh. What? Oh. Yes. Someone there?
Ben. Now, will you listen to me? There's a woman buried in the basement of the smokehouse. And she's alive. Oh, I know what you're all thinking, but it's true. Mother, the smokehouse was torn down years ago. Yes, and the basement filled in with earth. That's where she's buried. I see. She's buried, but she's alive. Don't you dare patronize me. All right, Mother, how do you know she's alive? Because I heard her calling for help. From under the ground? Yes, yes. Mother, be reasonable. If she's alive and she's buried, how Don't do you... Don't stand there talking. She'll suffocate. All right, well, go take a look. Wait a minute. You know that George took time off on his Sunday to come up here, especially to discuss the offer from Harrison George, Company. George, do you believe I demanded? Of course not, Laura. Will you help me? Certainly. Then come. Couldn't be more effective if you staged yourself. Effective? Even old Square George would have to be on our team after that display. He's Mother's friend, Carolyn. And he's also Honest John. He'd have to testify to what he saw and heard. You'd call Mother's attorneys a witness against her? Pretty rough on him. On both of them. Can't be helped. Dusty. Dusty, come here.
the little dog was digging, right? Yes, Mother, right where? I'm certain it was here. And over there, I brought help. Can you hear me? Where are you? Where are you? Come along, Mother, let's Get go. away from me. Mother, please. Don't you think I know? You can't wait to have me declared incompetent. Believe me, I don't want to have to do Perhaps it. Perhaps now you think you can have me committed so you can have your way. Well, I'll fight you, Howard. I won't have my house torn down, a thousand tacky shacks desecrating this property. But you won't have to do it if you just listen to reason. Laura, Laura, just because you think you I heard did something hear it. doesn't... I did, I did. And that little dog was digging right there. Laura. <laughs> I brought help. Listen, I brought help. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Come on, come on now. Let's go home. Come oh, on now. Please. Let's take a little nap. Here we go. Yeah, we go. Yeah. Everything's fine. Oh, please. You've got to take it easy. There's your Where first day out. Where are you? You should go home and lie down. Where are you? The doctor said you shouldn't be too excited. person doesn't hear voices and see things that aren't there. But an insane one doesn't question what he sees and hears, whatever it is. Precisely. And I don't, George. So either I'm insane or there really is a woman buried out there. Laura, what happened to you could happen to anyone after a severe emotional crisis. Now, Peter. You've just come through the most difficult period in your life. Perhaps I haven't come through it. Perhaps I've come home too soon. Because I did hear it. I did see that dog. And that's all I could do to sit here talking to you when I know that woman is please, suffocating. Please, please, please. Now, when we're weak and vulnerable, our imagination can conjure up some very strange things. Things that seem very real indeed. Dear George, you don't mean a word you're saying. Oh, you're just exhausted. A little nap. You'll see things quite differently. I wish that were true. But it isn't George. It isn't. No, no. It's relaxed.
Hello? Carl, I waited up half the night for your phone call. Look, I thought we agreed that you were never to call here. You agreed you'd call me last night. Did you tell her? Yeah, yeah, I told her. And? What happened? Well, how did she take it, Carl? That's a foolish question, isn't it? What's the matter with you? Honey, look, I... Evie, I don't feel like talking right now. Is she there now? No, she's... she's gone. She's... You mean she moved out? Yeah, she's, uh... gonna send for her things. Oh, oh that's marvelous. Oh, my poor baby, it must have been rough on you. You need, uh, some tender loving care. I'm coming right over, okay? No, uh, no, look, honey, the neighbors. Evie, please, I mean... We had a rough thing here last night, and, and a lot of noise. So, I think we better just cool it for a little while, huh? Well, if uh, the mountain won't come to Mohammed, why don't you come over here? Honey, I can't. For one thing, I have my car down the shop. I have to pick it up today. Look, I tell you, I'll, I'll gonna call you right away. I promise. Okay. Oh, uh, Carl. I mean, well, at least tell me. Uh, are you free now? I mean, really free? Yes, Evie. That's what I am. Free. I'll be getting back to town. Call me if you need me. George, uh, I'd like to finish our conversation, if you've got a moment. Howard, it's academic. Uh, I agree it's an excellent offer, but until your mother decides... Sir, to... mother is, is, is no longer competent to make those decisions. That's an opinion, not a legal fact. It is a legal fact, sir. For the past five months, mother's been in the sanitarium. Nevertheless. This is still her property to do with as she chooses. And now that she's on the road to getting well again. Oh, George. 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 It's one thing to try to fool mother, but let's not kid each other. I know the thing. Indeed I... you're not. If it's necessary, we'll get a physician in to testify that she's no longer not able we. to handle her own affairs. Not we, Howard. Your mother's my client. I intend to protect her interests. Well, yes, sir, but isn't it to her interest to sell off the land? Her interest the way she sees them. Oh. Oh, I understand. Oh, yes. Well, perhaps, uh, perhaps I'd better get an attorney to protect my interest. Your privilege. But you have no legal position as long as your mother is alive. I do. She's declared mentally incompetent. You realize what that entails? Yes, sir, I do. And you would expose her to that kind of public humiliation? I don't want to have to do it. Unless you can persuade her to change her mind. What do you think I've been trying to do? George, do you realize we haven't even got enough money left to maintain this place? Well, then help me out. Two million dollars, George, and we can keep the house and three acres of land. You tell me, is it logical? Is, is it sane for her to want to turn the Howard, offer down? Howard, if you want. You can tell Harrison you're considering his offer. But try. Try talking it over again with your mother in a few days. Sir, what if she remains adamant? That's it. Unless you force a competency hearing. Oh. Oh, boy. I don't know. I... I gotta admit that after what happened today, the thought of seeing Mother stripped of all her dignity in front of a, a 
courtroom full of reporters. I hate to do that. Same old Howard. I thought you were finally growing into a man. What a ridiculous idea. This is an emergency. Get me the police. Yes, Mrs. Wine. Of course. Right away. Who are you laughing about? You're the one who's going to have to go out there. Well, I thought they put her away. Obviously, she's back. Obviously. Well, what has she dreamed of this time? A woman buried alive on her property. Alive, huh? And screaming to be dug up. Well, who wouldn't? Get going. Oh, come on, Sarge. Ain't she got nobody in that place that can wield a shovel? I guess they're all doubting Thomases like you. You know how many times I've been up there looking for non-existent prowlers and people following that lady? Harry. Oh, come on, Sarge. Why don't you just call her back and talk to her son or somebody? You heard me tell her we'll be right out. Well, where does it say in the sheriff's manual that we gotta spend our time humoring some batty old lady? Harry, get going. Yes, sir. Go through the motions, Harry. And keep that grin off your face when you get there. Now, she may have slipped her trolley, but show a little respect. Yeah, for all the taxes she pays. No, for all her years. And if you're lucky, you may get there one day yourself. Thanks, Sarge. the temperance lecture. I was just remembering how you couldn't bear the taste of the stuff when we first got married. Progress. Now I can't bear anything else without it. To you, Howard, dear, for making it all possible. And to your exquisite strength of character. Listen, Carolyn, I've told you from the beginning I've wanted to avoid a competency hearing, and I still do. Sure. Avoid anything unpleasant. Anything that calls for a decision and run from responsibility as if it were the plague. Well, if that's your image of me, you can take whatever satisfaction you want from your having shaped it. Oh, no. The putty had hardened long before I met you. Doesn't that make you pretty stupid for marrying me? Indeed. Why else work so hard to acquire a taste for this? There is a simplest solution to your problems, Carol. After you've acquired some community property. Well, well, there it is. One point to you for frankness. No, it's reality, Howard. Been taking some cold, sober looks in the mirror. Barely 30 and well on the road to being a bag. And I need traveling money. 
It's nice to know our future relationship won't be complicated by emotion. Bank on it. Died a lingering death years ago. A minute? Sure, come on in. Your mother called the station just to whine. Oh, I'm awful sorry about this. It's okay. Part of the job. Mother, I do wish you told me you were going to call the sheriff. Did you bring the show? Nobody's just whining. There's one in the tool shed. Yes, ma'am. Mother, you've had far too much excitement already. I think you should go like At the northeast corner of the property, you'll find where an old smokehouse has been dismantled and its basement filled in. That's where she is. Yes, ma'am. And hurry. Yes, ma'am. Hurry. Oh, boy. Well, that's it. But you can see there's no physical evidence to back up Mother's story at all. Well, there are some footprints. Sure, they're mine. And our attorneys and Mother's, but there weren't any when we first got here. No signs of digging? Nope. nope. The ground wasn't dug up at all? Nope. We looked for something, we couldn't find a thing. What about the dog? No sign of him either. Of course, some of the people in the housing tract behind those trees have dogs, and one of them could have come running over here chasing a squirrel or was digging for a groundhog or something, and the barking and the whining just kind of set mother off. What was this place? It was a smokehouse years and years and years ago. I don't know. It's, it seems incredible, but could some of the scent from the meats that were being cured here once still be in the soil? No, I doubt it. Where is this woman supposed to be buried? Mother said somewhere within this area here. This place hasn't been dug up in years. It'd take us all day to dig this up. Yep. Mr. Winant, your mother was actually talking to the ground. Yes. I suppose you know my mother was away for a while. Yes, sir. Well, the doctor said she was ready to come home. I, I thought so, too, actually. And she's been home for less than a week now. This is her first day out of the house. I'm sure it was very real to her. I don't know. Maybe if you told her that you'd, you'd dug up some earth and just couldn't find anything, it would help. Yeah. I guess that would be the best thing to do. Well, just so I won't be lying. Thank you. I appreciate your help. No, ma'am. Did you dig where I told you? Oh, yes, ma'am. And you can stop worrying. Whatever it was you heard, it wasn't anybody buried. What I heard was a woman calling for help. Yes, ma'am. Well, I can request a crew with picks and shovels. But seeing how it's Sunday and we're short-handed, well, they probably couldn't get up here until sometime tomorrow. Yes. And if she isn't already dead, she certainly will be by then. Thank you for your trouble, Deputy. Thank you, Deputy. You and the deputy have a good laugh? You know that's not true, Mother. Do I? I could always tell when you were lying, Howard, since you were a little boy. Where are Martin and Anna? It's their day off. They've gone to Santa Maria. Santa Maria? He has to visit his brother. He told you that. Mother? The deputy told you the truth. And that's another lie. You weren't gone long enough to do any digging.
You need anything else? If you don't have enough already, the deputy's testimony will clinch it. Close your mouth, Carol, and your fangs are showing. Can you hear me? Where are you? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Oh. Yes, I'll help you. I'll get you out. I'll get you out. my cousin. Her folks are visiting at my house. Then your mother's home? Yeah. What about you? Yeah, I live down the street. What's your name? David. Your mother home too, David? Yeah, she's taking a nap. Her and Daddy. I see. Um, do you know if any of the ladies on this street are, are missing or anything like that? No, I don't. Why? Well, I just wondered. David, are you strong? Sure. You suppose you could help me do some digging? What for? Well, I lost a piece of jewelry, an earring, but I know just where it is. Well, I don't know if I can. I'd appreciate it, David. You see, my fingers aren't very strong anymore. Uh, arthritis. Uh, Grown-ups' hands get like that sometimes. I pay for your help, David. How much? A dollar. A dollar. a dollar? Okay. I'm strong, too, for a girl. So I. Uh, thank you, but this is really a one-man job. I'll go home and get my dad's shovel. Uh, no, no, I've got a shovel, David. Uh, come along. I'll show you where it is. Okay. Come on, I'm tired of this film, David. Let's go in the house and watch TV. In there? Yes. It's not far. Gee, I don't know. Uh, what's the matter? Well... You're not the lady who lives there, are you? Why? Well, my folks say that she's kind of... What, David? Well, they say she's... Nothing. Well, I, I don't live there, David. I'm... I I'm just visiting. You know her? Mrs. Why? Uh, Mrs. Wynette. Yeah. Is she... Like they say? You mean ill? Yeah, I guess. Looney, everyone says. 
Oh, well, she wasn't well, but uh, I think she's just fine now. Won't she be mad about our going onto her property? I hear she's awful mean. My mom says she just hates everybody. Oh, no, David. She won't mind. I'm sure of it. Well, okay. You can see where I've been trying to dig, but a strong boy like you can do it easily. Right here? Right there. Oh, that's very good, David. You certainly are strong. How did the earring get in so deep? Well, it was all dug up here the other day when I was here last, and then it was filled in again. Sure got hard in just a couple of days. Do I get the dollar even if you don't find it? Of course, of course. Oh. Hey! You heard it. Well, sure I heard it. How'd you do that? You got one of them ventriloquist things in your mouth? Ventriloquist, David. Yeah, let me see it, huh? Oh. Hey, you didn't do that. Your mouth was closed. It came from down there. David, there's a woman buried down there. What? We've got to get her out. That's why I need your help. David, come back. David, your dollar. David. I need some help. What? Could you help me? Help you how, lady? Well, I know it sounds odd, but I need someone to dig. Just a few minutes, I'm sure. You see, my hands aren't strong enough. I haven't got the faintest idea what you're talking about. It's not far. Just the other side of that ravine. Well, that's private property. Yes, I know. It's mine. I live there. But you see, I need help. You're Mrs. Wynant. Yes. Uh, Mrs. Wynant. Who? Mrs. Wynant? If you'd just be kind enough to give me a hand. Well, why do you want to dig? Uh, look, I'm watching football in there. Uh, can't you get your gardener, your son, or, or someone to do it for you? Uh, but you see, uh, there's a woman buried there. I think you'd better call the sheriff about that. It seems like a matter for them. I don't want to get mixed up in anything like that, destroying evidence and all. But you don't understand. She's alive, and every minute counts. Well, you're welcome to use our phone if you want to call the sheriff. No. Oh. Oh. Never mind. All that money. Well, she sure can keep it. Maybe I should call her son. Oh, no. We probably have one of those unlisted numbers. I mean, they usually do. Besides, she looked harmless to me. Yes, what is it? 
forgive me for disturbing you, but is the lady in the house in? Why? Well, I just, I just want to make sure she's all right. What? That's her! It is. What is it with you, lady? What are you trying to do? I'm terribly sorry about startling David, but... Startling him? You scared him half to death. You probably have nightmares for the next couple of weeks. What kind of nut are you, anyway? Please, it's very important. You see, there's someone in trouble. You get your kicks out of scaring little kids? Believe me, I didn't intend to frighten him. People like you ought to be locked up. You must listen to me. No, you listen to me. If you don't stop bothering us, I'll call the police and press charges against you. Ready to go. He's going to beat the pants off you today. Helen, I'm here. Uh, she's not here, Bernice. What do you mean? We have a date for lunch and bridge at Wilma's. Where's your golf bag? Oh, uh, well, you see, uh, last night, uh, Helen and I had a... Uh... Oh, boy, don't tell me you and Helen had another fight. Oh, yeah, it was quite a wingding, too. Uh, I'm afraid it was loud enough to entertain the whole neighborhood. I suppose she's gone to her mother's again. Uh, well, she said she was going to send for her things, that's all. That bad? Yeah, yeah, that bad. Look, I'll, I'll come and apologize to Ted. I know I should have called and everything. You know? I don't think your buddy feels much like golf today. Look, I am sorry, Ted. I, I, I'd only be a drag to you out there. You Look, see? Helen's gone off to her mother or somewhere. And why don't you play golf anyway? Get your mind off your troubles. <sighs> Helen can be the golf ball. Look, I'm awfully sorry. I know I should have called you and everything. Look, uh, Sunday I'll give you two strokes aside, huh? It's okay. You won't have any trouble getting a fourth out there, will you? No sweat. How do you do? I wonder if you'd know if anyone, uh, any of the women on this street are missing. I beg your pardon. I know it's a strange question, well, but... Well, Mrs. Wynant, to what do we owe the honor of a visit from the Grand Dam of Wynant Hill? Oh, Ken. Do I know you? No, I'm sure you don't, Mrs. Wynant. But you can bet that I'll never forget you. I'm afraid I don't understand. See, I'm the guy that uh, built these houses that went into hock to option this land, and then you and your fancy friends tried to hang me out to dry. Oh, Ken, please. All your lawyers trying every trick in the book to get this property rezoned so you could keep riffraff like us out of your neighborhood. You almost did it, too. You almost broke me. Now, what can I do for you? I need your help. <laughs> do you now? Please, it's very important. There's a woman. No, whatever it is, no. <laughs> but let me tell you, Mrs. Wynant, you have made my day. <laughs> You've made my week. <laughs> Goodbye, Mrs. Wynant.
Sir, can you help me? I'm at my wit's end. Sir, can you help me, please? I'm at my wit's end. Oh, I'm sorry. What's the trouble? No one will believe me, but I'm sure now it's not my imagination. There's a woman buried just beyond those trees. Buried? Yes, yes. Well, I, I'm sorry, I don't understand. They won't believe you. Who did you tell? Oh, my son, the sheriff, everyone. The sheriff? Everyone, but they think, they think I'm out of my mind. Oh, I see. I'm not strong enough to dig, and they won't. But she's there. I know she is. Well, how is it that you happen? I mean, how, how do you know she's there? Because I heard her. You heard her? Yes. Calling for help. Then she's still alive. How could she possibly still be alive? I mean, how could anyone breathe under the ground? Well, I don't know. But her voice was very weak, as if she had very little strength left, or was slowly suffocating. Well, when, when did you hear her? I mean, how, how long ago? The last time, perhaps a half hour. She may be dead by now. Yeah. Still, it's a very difficult story to believe. Just the same, I'm telling you the truth. A little boy heard her, too. A little boy? Yes, but it frightened him. He ran away. Oh, please, you must help me. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, I will help you. But first, you have to come and sit down. There's no time. Well, just a minute. Every second count. Well, I know, but you seem so, so very exhausted. Oh. You don't believe me either. Yes, I do believe you, and I'm going to help you. But first, you, you have to sit down and tell me the details, quickly, so that I can help you. Had you looked through the house carefully? Every inch of it, twice now. And you're certain she's not on the property? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, let's check with the neighbors. Get in. Okay. Now, feel better? Are you sure you know where to find her? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I'll dig where you were digging. Perhaps I'd better come with you. No, no, that won't be necessary. As soon as I find her, then I'll come back here. Why, that's the little dog. Oh, Dusty, what about her? Well, she was digging there, where the woman is. Oh, Dusty has a great nose. Mr. Nesbitt, where is your wife? My wife? She's visiting her mother. What are you doing? I'm going home, Mr. Nesbitt. Oh, I don't think you'd better. Let me buy no, Mr. Nesbitt. No, you're still Nesbitt. too tired. No! I'm sorry. You never intended to do any digging, did you? Mr. Nesbitt, your wife may still be alive. It's not likely. I'd only be digging up a gas chamber for myself. What do you intend to do with me, Mr. Nesbitt? I'm not sure. I'm sorry. I wish you hadn't backed me into a corner like this. You see, I didn't mean to hurt anyone. We had an argument. There was an accident. Well, it really doesn't matter anymore, does it? Yes, it does. If it was an accident, not premeditated, mitigating circumstances, you are not a murderer. No, a man and his wife have a fight. He kills her, and then he buries her in the ground. No. Not a chance. But you, a woman with your history, 
if she apparently committed suicide or had an accident, then no one would be surprised. Shall I scream, Mr. Nesbitt? Or will you open the door? Mother! Oh, what? Do you know what you put us through in every single person on this street? He's the one. What? It's his wife buried there. I'm sorry, sir. I'm oh, uh, it's all right, Mr. Warren. I'm, I'm glad you came by. I let your mother come in because, well, she was acting kind of strange. Yes, she was ma talking about a woman buried in the woods yes, out here. Well, I was going to call you. I'm terribly sorry, sir. I understand. Howard, he's lying. I think he's he's the one who buried her. Uh, the, the dog was his. Mother, yeah, have mother, your name, mother. sir. Let's go home. Oh, yes, yeah, sure, Nesbitt. Carl Nesbitt. Is there a Mrs. Nesbitt? Oh, indeed there is. She's spending the day over at her mother's every Sunday. See, mother, I was just going right. to call her on the phone if you'd like to talk to her. Come on. No. Howard, I don't think that'll be necessary. Howard, no, what's the matter with you? I'm he's sorry, a murderer. Sir, mother, he was going to kill me, too. please, come on now. He's lying. Mother, come on. Still say please. No, you She really didn't make much sense, did she? But shouldn't she be under a doctor's care or something? She was. Oh? Yeah. I guess I'll have to take her back now. Must really be terrible for our family, huh? Sorry about this, Mr. Nesbitt. Oh, well. yourself into such a state that you leave me no alternative. Now, when you've rested and calmed down, we'll talk. But you're killing her. If she's not already dead, she surely will be by then, don't you see? Flora, please, now, please, don't fight it. You've got to get some rest. Oh, that poor woman. If only somebody... Some... She'll sleep now. I'll be down in a minute. All right, sir. think she'll sleep, sir? Well, she's utterly exhausted. That's a powerful drug. Ordinarily, I'd say she ought to sleep through till the morning. Ordinarily? Your mother has a great power of will, and she's exceedingly agitated. It's unlikely, but, well, if she fights that uh, sedation, it's possible in five or six hours that she could force herself awake. And what do we do then? That depends on, uh, on her state of mind. If necessary, uh, my service can get a hold of me at a moment's notice. And uh, I'll come up and see her in the morning. Uh, doctor? Yes. Uh, I'm sorry, sir. Do you, do you have a moment? Certainly. Do you think we could talk, sir, to just... Uh, sir, what, uh, what does this mean? I mean, you thought that she was ready to come home, and I did too, but obviously she's had some kind of, some kind of regression. Yeah, but you can't expect me to make a diagnosis based on, uh, on one hysterical incident. Oh, it's been going on all day. It didn't start with hysterics, just aberrations. 
She kept insisting that she saw in her things that were all in her head. Do you think she could possibly be remembering that woman in Florida, you know, was buried alive by the kidnappers? The idea of a woman buried alive. It could be a kind of transference. Tell me, uh, did anything happen, something that, uh, that she might feel threatens her? Well, but perhaps the fact that she knows that we have had offers to sell off most of the land. Oh. And perhaps the fact that she knows that we haven't got much choice in the matter. I don't know, sir. I've tried to talk to her about it, but she's been very unreasonable about the whole thing. Irrational, you mean? Undoubtedly, her breakdown was triggered by uh, your father's death. But before this, uh, before going away and after she's been back, she forgets things. What day it is, what happened a few years ago, what, what happened a few moments ago. Well, what's that if not unbalanced? That is physiological. It's uh, not an uncommon geriatric condition caused by hardening of the arteries. But, sir, she's not that old. My dear fellow, it can happen to uh, anyone in their 40s sometimes. It's a series of, of, uh, of, of little strokes that temporarily, only temporarily, cut off the uh, supply of blood to a small portion of the brain. But uh, it can be treated. It definitely, very definitely, is not a psychiatric condition. And what happened today? Well, as I said, no more curbside diagnosis. Doctor. Yes. If you were called upon to testify at a competency hearing in view of what did happen today, what would your professional opinion be? Do you plan one? Well, oh, we're considering it. Oh, I see. Well, Doctor. My professional opinion? I haven't got one yet. Are you going to bury a body? What? Edie? Yeah? Well, Hammett's come to the mountain. Come on, celebration time. Well, Hi. Well, that's not a big reward for driving us here. Why, is something the matter? No, no, no. It's, uh, here, let me get the lights, huh? Just, uh, just the neighbors. Come on. Come on inside. Um, I was about to make ourselves a drink, you know, but I decided that it would be much better if you made it for me. Yeah. You're glad I came, aren't oh, you? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Come on.
among the living. You meet somebody in particular? Anybody in particular. The same anybody you were with until 4.30 this morning? Oh, you've been keeping tabs on me. How nice. Makes a girl feel loved. No, Carolyn. I beg your pardon. You're not going anywhere. Well, Howard, don't be such an ass. If I divorce you now, there won't be any community property to share. You divorce me? Yes, I'm tired of being known as the cuckold of Wine and Hill. Well, aren't you interesting? Standing there on your hind legs, making sounds like an outraged husband. Interesting, but a long time late. I'm quite serious, Carolyn. Good. Because I have a bulletin for you, Howard, dear. I called a lawyer this afternoon, and he gave me a choice bit of information. A daughter-in-law can force competency hearings in this state without her husband's cooperation. And thanks to your mother's marvelous performance today, in front of a large and assorted audience, I'm practically assured of the result. So get the divorce going. By all I'm sorry, but I just don't think I'm going to be very good company for you tonight, that's all. You are uptight about her being here, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, I guess that's... Silly boy. I mean, this is your house now. She's out of your life forever. Now, come on. Come and sit in this chair. Let Evie's educated fingers do their... do their stuff with this nasty tension in your neck. Oh. Okay. Okay. No, no, honey, look, I really, I'm not, I'm not in any mood for that, I, uh... I think you better just let me stew in my own juices for a while, huh? Are you challenging me? Hmm? Huh? Hmm? Come <laughs> on. Just knock it off. Huh? All right. I accept the challenge. Now, you make yourself another drink, all right, my darling boy? Well, I slip into something more comfortable, okay? No, no, no I said knock it off or I'm... Or what? Or what, Carl? I'm sorry, honey. You hurt my arm. What, do you think I was going to get into something of hers, huh? Do you really think I'm that common? Honey, honey, I, I said I was sorry. No, please, try and understand. I, it's just I had my mind on some, some other things. Oh, I see. I don't actually repulse you. I just bore you. No, no, honey. It's what you said. It's this house, you know. I, I think I'm going to have to figure on living somewhere else. Uh, let me see. Get a fresh start. Huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, Carl, we have to figure on a lot of new things. A whole lot of new things. Maybe we just better stop before we start. I mean, I don't need a brick wall to fall on me, you know.
Honey, I, I'll call you. Soon, huh? Yes, yes, if you wish. Saved her life, Mrs. Winant. She saved mine. May I drive you home, ma'am? Yes. Yes, thank you, Sergeant. It's been a long day. What happened? I heard something on the radio. Carolyn, your case just got thrown out of court. Mm -hmm. 